I can say that I shook Lanello's hand. I can say that I knew him as a man. Yes, I walked the earth beside him, never knowing that he'd leave. Oh, so soon that this great man would ascend. Oh, we called him many things upon the earth. His name was Mark. It was given him at birth. He was free to those he taught, and for the poetry he brought, he would pen Lanello as his signature. He was a prophet, was his mission and his name, and those whose lives he touched will never be the same. You could tell that he was purity, and you could read the truth in the holy words he spoke in God's name. He was a shepherd and so proud of his sheep, and he gave them portions of the flame to keep. He bestowed upon his children an awareness of their Christ self, and I thank the Lord Mark Prophet touched me. He was a prophet, was his mission and his name, and those whose lives he touched will never be the same. You could tell that he was purity, and you could read the truth in the holy words he spoke in God's name. He was so gentle he could soothe a baby child, Yet God gave him power to make the storm run wild. Not a greater man you'll see more than once in a century. He's not gone, Mark is with us all the while. He was a prophet, was his mission and his name. And those whose lives he touched will never be the same. You could tell that he was pure. And you could read the truth in the holy words he spoke in God's name. He was a prophet, was his mission and his name. And those whose lives he touched will never be the same. You could tell that he was purity. And you could read the truth in the holy words he spoke in God's name. Well, with that song, ladies and gentlemen, that becomes uh, a, a little bit of my, uh, I don't know, my testimony to exactly how I got on the path of initiation, how I met Mark, and uh, how I met Mother, and how I met the teachings, and uh, uh, it, I don't know, it kind of sums it up in a way. It goes back to, uh, it goes back to Colorado Springs in 1972, actually. I was, uh, I was entertaining, I was on the road performing in the nightclubs and uh, just uh, picking and grinning for my, uh, you know, my eight-hour pay. <clears throat> Actually, it was four hours. It's four hours a night, six nights a week, year in and year out, and I've been doing that since about 1961. I started entertaining in Kansas City at the age of 20. And, uh, and so in 19, about 1971, I... Uh, I started, I kind of went on a diet. I was over in Davenport, Iowa, and I was getting interested in health food and vitamins and all that kind of thing. And, and so when, I, when we got a booking, uh, our next booking was going to be uh, in Colorado Springs right after that. Uh, first thing for me to do, of course, was to go out and hit the streets and try and find a, uh, a health food store where, uh, where I could, you know, get some more vitamins and stuff. So I'm wandering around the streets of Colorado Springs looking for a health food store, and I wandered into one actually, and it just, I don't know, just something about it just didn't feel right. So I kept wandering and uh, ended up walking into a place called the Four Winds Organic Center. Here's this great big, great big sign and this cornucopia in the window and all this neat stuff, and I walk in and there's this uh, classical music playing. Uh, there's a violet ceiling, <laughs> and uh, it's... It's just a beautiful place, and uh, so I thought, well, hey, this, this feels like the right place, and so I walked on in, and, and uh, I could see clearly that they had vitamins and health food and 
one thing or another. <clears throat> well, I don't know that it was necessarily the very first time that I walked in, but I got to where I was, uh, you know, uh, frequenting this little, this little health food store quite a bit during my stay there. And it was either the first day I went in or it was shortly thereafter that I was sitting at the, uh, at the juice bar. They had a little juice bar, and I was sitting up at the juice bar <clears throat> having my... Uh, having either my breakfast or my lunch or my dinner, I, I would spend, uh, oh, an hour, an hour and a half there <laughs> each time, three times a day. I mean, I was spending my life in the Four Winds Organic Center. So I'm sitting there at the counter, and, uh, and all of a sudden, on these great big, huge cast iron chairs that they have, these seats, these counter seats, and this fellow sidles up next to me and, and uh, looks me straight in the eye and says, uh, well, he says, uh, how do you like the place? <clears throat> I says, it's real nice. He was sitting over here to my left. I said, I really like it. I mean, it's, it's nice. It's, it's got a lot of neat stuff here and everything. Well, when I looked at this man, and I said to myself, this fellow looks very, very familiar. Uh, and I thought, I probably saw him in the nightclub, you know? And, uh, <laughs> well, come to find out, it's Mark Prophet, and I probably didn't see him in the nightclub unless he was out rescuing somebody. That was my first introduction to Mark Prophet. He just sat down next to me and just like an old friend said, well, how do you like the place? So uh, I did. I love the place, and uh, I, uh, and that's that's where it all started. That's where I began to get all the information that I needed to to really get me on the path and and keep me on the path. Eventually, one day I went to a Sunday service, and and Mark Prophet was uh, was giving the uh, the service. It was a replay of what they did back then. Was at La Terrell, was they would replay for the public in the evening the dictation that had come through the messenger in the morning for the staff. And so this was a replay of Jesus uh, taken by Mark early in the morning. And uh, so that was my very first, first dictation. Mark had a way of, uh, after the service, he would always stand at the door that exited the, uh, the little chapel there. It was the white chapel. They had a white chapel, and then they also had a, a library, a, dark, a darker area, which was a part of a chapel later. But this was when in the white chapel, and uh, Mark would always... Uh, stand at the door and greet people as they left. So when I walked through the door and shook his hand, he said, well, Terry Kennedy, it's good to see you. And of course, he, had, he remembered me from down at, the, down at the store, but he remembered my name, and I was absolutely flabbergasted that he would be able to call me by my first name. So I was pretty impressed. We, uh, we, had, uh, oh, we had tea and uh, cookies out there in the kind of the outer area. And then uh, we would go into the family room and Mark would sit down on this beautiful violet chair and, and just let people ask questions. And, and uh, it was standing room only. I mean, people would just cram in there and sit on the chairs and the floor and stand up. And, and uh, what Mark was doing was, was really ministering to the, to the people. Now, there was something about Mark Prophet that I could not really explain to people. I mean, I wanted to be able to tell my friends and my relatives and everything, hey, I just... I met this most amazing man, and it was it was actually pretty hard to do because uh, my own inner feelings were were difficult to um, kind of convey to people because uh, my feelings were and I knew that I had met one of the most balanced people ever in my life and here was this man that I came to find out later actually had a very balanced threefold flame within his heart and that's the perfect love wisdom and power and this man was he was so amazing. Mark was just as common as a, I, <clears throat> I don't mean to uh, sound silly when I say it, but he was as common as an old shoe, you know? I mean, he was like, he was exactly what you needed when you needed it. He was the commons man, common man's minister, yet, <clears throat> I mean, and I had no idea it was the, the messenger, messenger for the Great White Brotherhood. I mean, I wouldn't have understood that had he told me that. So to me and for me, he was everything that I needed in the health food store right on the street where I needed it. And so I didn't get, uh, I didn't really get drawn into the church until after Mark ascended. And I got this, this notice in the mail that said uh, they were celebrating Mark's ascension service, uh, 1973 in February, February 26th, Mark ascended. And uh, <clears throat> I believe those dates are correct. And uh, so I got this thing in the mail, I was on the mailing list and uh, I couldn't believe uh, what had happened, you know, that Mark had passed on. So I called Kathleen down at the uh, Four Winds Organic Center, and I said, Kathleen, I said, this can't be happening. Mark can't die. 
She said, Mark didn't die. Mark ascended. It's a great day. And she says, not only that, his son, Sean, who was eight years old, just fixed pancakes for everybody over at La Terrell. I thought, well, now, isn't that a different way of looking at things? And so from that moment on, I had, <laughs> I had a whole new slant on what life's all about. And so I got into the celebration, and, uh, and of course, that was, uh, that was my, my first real, probably real awakening as to just what the Ascension was all about. I, I used to carry a little kind of a pad around in my, in my pocket, and I would keep my expenses on one side, and then when I had something to write down, I'd turn it over, and when the, when the paper met in the middle of this little spiral thing, well, I knew I was out and I needed a new one. So Mark wanted to demonstrate something. He was talking about how, why you need to take a colonic and, and get yourself, you know, all cleaned up on the, other, on the other end and from the inside out. And so he's drawing this spiral, you know, for me on this little thing. And I've got this thing somewhere. And uh, so we were chatting, and uh, I, mother and the mother and the family pulled up in the, uh, in the Citron out, outside, and uh, he said, come here, I'd like for you to meet my family. So we went outside, and... Mother pulls up. Mother gets out of the car. She's got Tatiana in her hands. Tatiana's a little baby, and, and uh, she's wearing this little kerchief sort of a head thing. She probably just washed her hair, and she's got this little kerchief on, and just looks, <laughs> looks like somebody's housewife, you know. And, uh, and uh, Gilbert Hemeter, I believe, was driving him, and uh, all the rest of the family was in the car, and he took me around, and he introduced me to all of them. Well, it was a very sweet thing for Mark to have done, because uh, uh, little did I know <clears throat> at some future point, I would be very involved with mother, and uh, as it turns out, <clears throat> mother uh, took me into, uh, I'd say she took me into her heart almost like a, like a brother. Uh, at one point, she, she did tell me she never had a brother, and uh, we were fairly close in age, and so she shared that with me. She said, uh, you know, she, she thought of me as a kind of a brother, and uh, I've always carried that in my heart, and that, that's, a, that's a, a very sweet thing for her to have said to me. So uh, I, got, I got pretty involved with Mother after Mark uh, made his ascension because I just knew it was the next place to go. Actually, was uh, I think the first song I ever wrote for uh, as a, as a sort of an ascended master song, if you will, <clears throat> and I wrote that on the way to Atlanta. There was an Atlanta class that was held right after the class of Freedom seventy three, the land of Lanello. So uh, the land of Lanello was the the very first formal class that I went to, but. Uh, uh, I didn't go to the uh, the dictation portion of it. I, I only went to the survival portion of it. <laughs> and I'll never forget when I got there, uh, uh, Roy Johnson was manning the uh, the food tent or the food building, and and he saw me and he says, "Where you been?" And I, <laughs> I said, "Well, I I've been on the road entertaining, you know." He said, "Well, you missed everything. You missed all the good stuff." And of course, I I didn't know really what I'd missed because I didn't know what a conference was, you know. I. I, I knew Mark Prophet from the Four Winds Organic Center. I knew Mother as, uh, as his wife, and, uh, and I was just kind of getting to know everyone. But anyway, the, uh, the freedom or the uh, survival portion of that class was just excellent. So I was able to attend it in the morning and entertain 
in the evening at uh, Colorado Springs because the land of Lanello was about 29 miles east of, uh, of Colorado Springs. And so uh, what happened after the Freedom class, Freedom 73, was the masters asked Mother to go to Atlanta and hold a, a little seminar, a weekend seminar. Mother put me up with, uh, uh, I didn't have a place to stay, so she plugged me into Tom Miller's room and I slept there on the floor in my sleeping bag and with, uh, with William Harper. And uh, uh, she just, uh, like I say, she just basically took me into the fold. Uh, and at some point there, you know, she was, she was so sweet, she would invite me up to sing. I would sing at the lectern or the podium with Mother. She'd have me, you know, she'd just open up the songbook and, and go through some things and say, well, here, let's, let's do this one, you know. And, and I was learning a few of them, and it was, uh, it was really sweet to be there just standing up there with Mother. Uh, and so this song I wrote on my way down to Atlanta in the, in the car. I was traveling with another fella, and uh, so I went up to a room and played it for her, and I got my very first teaching on uh, what can happen musically if you're not doing the right thing. And there was a particular line of that song that I just sang for you that she said, that's got a little curlicue on it, that, that, that note there, a little curlicue. And uh, she said that, uh, can, you, can you hold that note, can you just sustain that note and not give it that little curlicue? And uh, so I said, well, sure, you know, so I gave it a try and she said, uh, that's great. It has about nine times as much power now, Terry, as it did before. <laughs> and so here I was, I was getting these wonderful teachings from Mother at this very early stage in my chileship. And uh, come to find out, it was, it was the beginning of a long line of important musical uh, teachings for me because uh, being a musician, having, having been doing this all my life, it was important for me to contemplate uh, the fact that I may not want to do certain things anymore. I, I may not want to see what that curlicue was, was a human vibration. And the difference between the human and the divine is something that you learn as you go along this, this path of chilaship, and it, you, you just don't know the difference between them. But once you get on the path for a little while, you can spot them. What I'd like to do uh, is I'd like to show you what that little curlicue looked like and sounded like uh, as an example of what I was singing for Mother and uh, what she corrected me on. <clears throat> I think it went something like this. I and my father are one. I and my mother are one. Twin flames within so I can begin to show I and my father are one. See, I, you know, yeah, I, you, and my wife and I, we sit and joke about this at the restaurant. We go out to the restaurants and we're hearing the overhead music and we're hearing these people going, I, 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 every which way but, but straight. And uh, it's, it's, it's gotten out of whack. It's, a, <laughs> it's like a wheel that's out of, out of alignment and it's just about ready to come off. So that's an example of, uh, of kind of what I did. I would write my music as I would... It was driving up, up and down the road, and that's how I wrote my, I Shook Lanello's Hand. And uh, the first time I ever sang that for her, as a matter of fact, was, was in, uh, in South America. We were on a bus. And she was sitting, <clears throat> I, was, I, I was sitting right behind the driver, and she was sitting just across the aisle there in that one of those front two seats that looks out under the glass. And uh, I'd gone back and got my guitar, and, and uh, I said, Mother, I, I've got this song about... Uh, Mark that I wrote, uh, Lanello or Mark, I forget what I said. She said, well, let me hear it. So I sat on the edge of the seat there and sang it, and, and uh, she didn't say anything other than just, uh, she said, play it again. And it, uh, so I did. I just played it again, and, uh, and it, was, it was a very sweet moment. The songs that I've written for the Masters and for the Brotherhood, uh, I've given them you know, the right to, to publish them. But I'm telling you, there was a test that went with that, too, because I was flying into, I was flying into uh, Santa Barbara from Jacksonville, Florida, uh, once to record this, this 45 that we were going to put together. We are going to have uh, the Lanello song on one side and the song I wrote about Mother Mary on the other side. And, and so uh, uh, Mother asked me, she, she, said very, she, she asked me very specifically about my, my copyright. Would I be willing to give up the copyrights uh, to these songs? So there was another uh, first initiation on uh, surrender. 
And uh, I did. And I, I'm so glad that I did because it was uh, another step on the path. And uh, these things came from God and they must be shared by the people who hold the pearls for God and uh, be given to the world. And I knew that I'd, I'd have all that I needed after that. Uh, a song that I wrote when I was out on the road was, uh, I actually wrote it about, uh, <clears throat> well, I'll play you a little bit of it. I'm not going to play it all the way through. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> then I'll tell you about it. My brother asked me who Saint Germain was. My brother asked me who Saint Germain was. I thought and I wondered how I could explain what wonder was held in Saint Germain's name. He's helping to bring forth the teachings of God. He's helping to bring forth the teachings of God Aligned with our dear Master Jesus Christ And His Mother Mary In these three I trust And there's more to that. There's more to that. As a matter of fact, those are two out of six verses. Um, Actually, I have a, I have a brother uh, in, my, uh, in my worldly family who's very spiritual. As a matter of fact, he's the first one in our whole family to have, uh, to have gone, how do you want to say it, to have gotten spiritual, uh, above board, and uh, wasn't afraid to talk about his belief in uh, Jesus and read the Bible and talk about it and one thing and another, you know, and so many of us have those things going on, but it's under the surface. And he was the first one to come out with that on the surface. And I was visiting him back in, uh, back in Connecticut. And so, uh, bless his heart, he said, now Terry, now Terry, who is this St. Germain fellow that you talk about? You know? And uh, it was very, very sweet because he's, he's just one of the dearest people. And, and you know, it's, it's a real honor to be in a family with this soul. And so I did my best to explain who St. Germain was. And so then what I did, folks, was I I wrote my feelings down in that song. So those are, those are the, the things that I was thinking about at that time. I have a very sweet story to tell, too, about, <laughs> about this song that I, uh, that I recorded in Nashville. Uh, when I met Mark, uh, one of the things I did was I gave him a copy. I gave him a 45 of this record called Mama Bear, and I gave him an 8 by 10 glossy, and, you know, I signed it to, to Mark, you know, Terry Kennedy, you know. Here you go, you know. <laughs> Here's my stuff, you know, and I was so proud of it, you know. Of course, I, you know, it's natural. And uh, this song actually went on to become number one uh, in major markets around the country. It was number one for three weeks in Denver and three weeks in Kansas City, three weeks in Des Moines, Iowa, and got up in the top ten in Cincinnati, and it was getting airplay all across the country. So it was doing fairly well. So, so uh, Mark actually, uh, as I heard later, took the, took the record and took it upstairs over the Four Winds where they had a chapel up there and they'd have the decrees going and I guess and whatever and, and he played it for the staff and I heard about that later and I thought well <laughs> isn't that sweet I don't know whether I'd want the staff to hear that or not but <clears throat> but Mark wanted them to hear it see here's this guy Terry Kennedy who's a friend of ours you know so he was he was getting them used to me and one thing and another and I thought it was really sweet to hear about later on but <clears throat> To skip ahead just a little bit here, we were down in South America. Mother had asked me if I wanted to join the church uh, crew and the group that was going to South America. There were 50 or 60 students of the Masters that were going to go all over. They were going to, what we did was we went through six countries in 16 days. We flew out of Miami, Florida, and we ended up in Mexico City uh, for this December, last half of December of 1973. And Mother asked me if I wanted to go, and I said, Hey, this is, I, I said, I normally spend Christmas with my family, but this is my new family, so it makes sense, you know? So I, I went on the trip, and uh, at one point, we were, we, we, we traveled every which way we could. We went by bus and airplane, car, uh, train, and uh, so at this one point, we were supposed to have, for our little church group, two train cars to travel in between point A and B, and I don't remember where we were going and where we'd been, but <clears throat> we only had 
one train car. I think it was a 12-hour trip or something like that. It was extremely long. We all got crammed into one car. So I end up sitting on my suitcase right next to Mother. She's in this little booth area here. And so we've been going along and, and uh, you, know, we, you know how you do. You just kind of talk out all the subject matter. And at one point, so Mother, I had my guitar with me. Mother said, uh, say, Terry, uh, <clears throat> why don't you play that song for us that you, uh, that you recorded that was a number one hit? I said, uh, <clears throat> oh, I don't know, Mother, whether you'd like to hear that or not. Or, thing called Mama Bear, and it was cute, it was all right, it was nice for the world, you know, but I don't know whether, she said, no, no, I'd like to hear it, and uh, I said, yeah, but it's, it's, I don't know, Mother, it's kind of a worldly song, you know, it's not really a church song. She said, Terry, play the song. So, <laughs> so I, <laughs> I mean, how can, how can you not play the song when Mother says, Terry, play the song? <clears throat> so I said, okay, this is how much I sang. I know Goldilocks is just a children's story. Fairy tales, they never do come true. But I found footprints on my windowsill this morning. And Goldilocks don't wear that big a shoe. Mother said, uh, that's enough, Jerry. Thank you very much. <laughs> right after the Atlanta class, we we flew up to, uh, a, a mother f actually flew up to Washington, D.C. because the, the masters asked her to go to Washington, D.C. Uh, and there was, uh, there was a lady uh, that had a home that was kind of the focus there. So we, uh, I was given the opportunity to ride up there in, in mother's gold bus, which was this beautiful bus that Mark had built for mother. And uh, so I went up in the bus with uh, some of the staff and mother flew up and we, we stayed there at this lady's home. And I was sleeping on the I was sleeping in my sleeping bag on the, on the front room floor there, and all of a sudden, uh, Mother, we were all about to go to sleep, and Mother came traipsing down the stairs, you know, like a little teenager, and uh, she said, Terry, when's your birthday? So I said, well, uh, it's January 24th, 1941. Okay, thanks. Back up the stairs, you know, and uh, I didn't know why, but uh, later on I figured, well, she's probably making, <laughs> making some heavy calls for me. When we were down in South America, we had just gotten, we'd walked up, uh, on top of this, this pyramid where uh, John Fox is carrying his accordion. He's got this huge, heavy accordion, and these, some of these pyramid steps are like, you know, like this, you know. And uh, I don't know whether the camera could see that necessarily, but it's like, uh, you know, six inches this way and about two feet high. And so I actually carried his uh, accordion, I think, up this one, and he took my guitar just, for, just to give him a break. But there were a lot of, uh, usually there were a lot of negative records that were held in these places for various reasons. And so um, we went up there and we sang songs and then Mother made calls and whatever. And so when we came down, we got back on the bus and Mother was sitting in the chair right behind the driver and I was sitting next to her. And I'm just kind of chit-chatting with her, you know, and you know, making light conversation. And Mother's <laughs> Mother turns to me and she says, uh, Terry, would you please be quiet? I, uh, Linello's giving me the name of some black magicians. And... Uh, And I said, oh, sure, yeah, I guess I, guess I will. And uh, so, but you know, she, she knew I could handle it. I don't know what I would have done on this uh, path of initiation had it not been for Mother. You know, she took over when, when Mark ascended, and uh, she was always, in my estimation, uh, the strongest soldier on the planet. And from time to time, I would try to uh, compliment her when I was up on at the lectern or on, on a microphone or at the, at the podium or whatever. She didn't want to hear any of it. I remember once when I, I tried that, at the, she, had me, she invited me to sing at the main altar of the Holy Grail at, at Camelot before they dismantled the altar. Uh, she, she called me on the phone I went down at the print shop where I was working and asked me if I'd come out and sing my songs before they took the altar down. And uh, what a grand opportunity. And in particular that time I was <laughs> I was referring to her as one of the most stalwart soldiers on the planet, and she just, oh, be quiet, you know, just <laughs> sing your songs, Terry. Well, that's the way she was, you know. She was one of the ranks. And, and um, there are there's so, many, so many things that are unpleasant that are said about the messengers. I, I don't understand it myself. Personally, I don't understand it because, uh, to my way of thinking, the initiations that come to a soul on this path are impersonal. 
Now there's the personal personality, there's the personal impersonality and the impersonal impersonality and the impersonal personality, if you know what I'm talking about. You go around the clock and you position yourselves at these four quadrants and there are these different vibrations of initiations. But it's for the chila to figure, up, figure out uh, what the, where the initiation is, you know, and, and I figured that anything that rolled through mother, I, I don't care what it was, anything that rolled through mother and came to my doorstep was my initiation. Because every initiation is a dual initiation. If it's part hers and part mine, well, that's fine. But what can I learn from it, see? And so I, I loved her through all of these. I'll never forget, uh, I was just fresh on the path, and, and we'd just gotten back from Washington, D.C. I flew back with Mother and, and Randall and Tatiana, and, and we, we had a service over at, the, uh, at La Terrell. And I was well, being a nightclub entertainer and Mr. Mr. Laugh It Up sort of a guy, you know, um, always kind of making light of things, you know, and uh, I'll never forget, Mother chastised me afterwards, after the service was over, and told me how inappropriate my comments were. And I thought later on, I thought, good for her, you know, good for her, look what she did. Look how much good she did for my soul to, you know, to let me know that that's inappropriate. And she, she was never one to just rubber stamp whoever you thought you were. She was going right for who you really were. And uh, for that, I am eternally grateful, and, uh, and I, I consider it a, a major honor to be considered a friend of, of Mother and Mark's. Most, most of everything that I, I, I am and I, I was on, on, the, on the path, the path of initiation, has to do with music. I, I've been playing music since I was 15 years old. My mother co-signed for my first uh, little guitar, and I got hooked up with a music teacher, and and then I had a paper out, and I spent all my paper out bond money after two years and bought another electric guitar, which is quite a classic to this day. But my whole life has been, has been music. And so it's, it's obviously what I came to do, and it's kind of like my dharma. And, and the difference between the dharma and the sacred labor is, you know, you go to work over here, you do your sacred labor, and then you create your music uh, for your dharma. And so that's, that's where I am in my life right now. I want to... Um, I want to make sure that everything that I've written for the Brotherhood and for the Masters and for the world is, um, is now down on, on tape and on CD uh, because it's my testimony <coughs> to the path, path of initiation. Um, as things happen in the world, here we are, we're just in the wake of this uh, terrible tragedy in New York. Uh, and uh, as I sit and co-measure with what's going on in the world, I think, my gosh, uh, the world needs the teachings of the Ascended Masters in their, in their many facets. They need this jewel because it's, it's such a multifaceted uh, jewel, this pearl of wisdom of these teachings, is that little bits and pieces of, of uh, just, just the, the smallest part can help a soul get through uh, a major thing in life. And so my gratitude to, to Mother and Mark uh, is, is going to be expressed through my music and through my poetry and the, the books that I'll write, uh, memoirs and whatever. But so many of my memories uh, with Mother and Mark are, are actually at, tied to the music. What I'd like to do, I'd, I'd kind of like to end uh, my little discourse for you dear hearts uh, on this videotape with, uh, with a story of how I happened to write the, the song about Mother Mary, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Our South America trip had uh, ended up in Mexico City a lot of the staff had come down from Colorado Springs in these uh, big school buses and, uh, and so they met us there and we had this uh, conference in uh, December of, of 73. And we, uh, one of the things that was scheduled was to go over to the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And uh, so just before we went, we were read the story of Mother Mary's appearance to Juan Diego in the year 1531. And it was such a sweet, sweet story. I, I was so impressed, and then Mother Mary gave a dictation, and, uh, and at the end of this dictation, uh, I remember she said, I love you, and uh, I, I used those, those words in the song because that was what she had said to us in that dictation. So we went to the shrine, and we were actually given the opportunity to sit on the altar side, uh, very, very close to the tilma, uh, and here's this tilma that, <coughs> that uh, I won't go into any detail now, but here's this tilma that it was made out of cactus fiber that's supposed to disintegrate within three years, and it's been hanging there at the altar since the year 1531. Pretty amazing. 
So we're in the radiation of Mother Mary, and and uh, Mother Mary gave, Mother Mary gave me a song. My uh, my humble little uh, Midwestern uh, style on this guitar, <coughs> and my country western roots. Um, I guess you'd call them country, maybe middle of the road. I don't know. She uh, she deposited this song on my heart, and I worked on it that evening in the in the hotel. I was I was rooming with Kenneth McNeil and. I said, Kenneth, I, I've got to go into the bathroom now to finish this song. And so uh, he always kind of jokes about that. But I did. I went in there and I kind of finished it. And the following day, we were over in the Yucatan. And uh, I went into Mother's uh, quarters and uh, asked her if I could play this song for her. And there were some changes that were made. But basically, <clears throat> this is what Mother Mary gave to me. And it's what I want to give to the world. And what I want to give to the world more than anything <clears throat> is my testimony to the reality of the Christ in Mark Prophet and Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Because when Jesus was asking his disciples if they knew who he was, some of them did not know, and some of them did. And I, for one, my friends, am one that does know that the Christ in Mark Prophet and Elizabeth Clare Prophet is what has saved this planet and is taking us from the Piscean Age to the Aquarian Age by God's grace. I witnessed the love radiating from Mary. I stood before the Virgin of Guadalupe. Oh, how she told me she'd waited so long for me to see her and take forth my song. Mother Mary told me to be sure to tell you the time has come for her to appear to the eyes of children all of so much worth across the face of our dear mother earth Ave Maria I love you Mother Mary told me I love you From the holy ground where she appeared to Juan Diego I take this song to sing and onward I go to tell the people she'll be coming soon clothed with the sun under her feet the moon Ave Maria I love you too Mother Mary told me
One thing she told me is that her love is meant to flow to all under God's law. Here's how to call her, and with her you can be. Call Mother Mary to gain your victory. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sons and daughters of God, now and at the hour of our victory over sin, disease, and death. Ave Maria, I love you too. Mother Mary told me I love you. Ave Maria, I love you too. Mother Mary told me 